Hey guys, we're getting ready to, to drive. Yes, it was Father's Day. Me and Monica, we're gonna do a quick ride to, um, a quick ride to um, Eight Bells. Just like a little 30 minute drive, just to get some driving time in. We had a busy week. The kids were taking stock today. I just wanted to show you guys this um, apparatus that I'm using here. Yeah? Before we ride, we've got two of them. Uh, just a backup in case we need another one, but this is a game changer and is one of the most important um, Important safety mechanisms you can get because this is um, What 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 we measure our wheels with and yeah, you guys must just remember one thing um, When doing this with the wheels, right? Um, it's always better to cross-reference a few times when I mean by cross-reference is going to uh, um filling it up here right and then and then um going to the garage and just double checking that uh, right yeah but okay, i don't know if the noise was a bit of an inhibitant there, but um like i said these readings aren't always 100 percent um but to get to know your piece of equipment you take your measurements and then when you do go to the garage fill up again with petrol and just check the first few times and if you're happy with that then you know you're good to go because uh, <laughs> our wheels is very most probably the most important thing that and that and your that and your brake pads almost probably the most important thing um, on your bike to be honest with you either fails you in a lot of shit but in any case stay with us we're going to take you on this uh, this nice scenic trip where we go through Falmouth a uh, back road that not many people know in Oatsworn and um and we'll see we will we'll um show you the trip it's a, it's a quick easy one we're not staying over anywhere it's just like a quick trip uh, and have a like a savannah light or something like that and then head back home never drink too much or drink while you ride but we always have like a beer or a savannah and then we just take a break and then we come along so stick with us What I haven't, what I haven't showed you guys is these pillars, right? We've got quite a few of them. We use them on our, we use them on our, um, we use them on our motorbike um, side panniers, right? Uh, when when we empty and we're not, we actually just going for a ride. It's but mostly we do gravel, right? And these these things are just uh, extra cushion on the side, on the on soft panniers that we use. That that. Um, it just makes me feel better if we do fall you've got um your panniers do help a lot with the fall so so then it's good to have these little side pillars and i just prop uh, mine and monica's bikes uh, panniers with these things right and um believe me they've actually worked when you drop the bike it's also a little bit easier to pick it up because the bike is a little bit more um not so flat on the ground in that sense so yeah so it's a safety precaution and it's quite a it's a quite a handy little thing to do and uh, yeah like you guys know i've had i've had videos out on panniers i'm a soft pannier guy i know a lot of people have different opinions on that too but um i'm a soft pannier guy when it comes to those things so yeah um yeah it's all little things that people just take for granted i think other you think you think you you should know you should know it uh, and so on and the other day i actually met a very experienced guy at a motorbike place that we service our stuff and so on right and he he was used to riding tar and he was beginning to go gravel and he said he was feeling so unsure of it and 
so like almost like uh, scared of it. You know, he's he's been a little bit on the gravel and he's a bit scared of it. And yeah, you have to start off slowly on gravel. You have to start on smaller bikes. Put it that way before you can even consider. And yes, he was on a 1000 a BM 125, I think, and and he was kind of feeling a bit a bit dodge. So. low speeds. The falls that you do do on gravels are very, very low speeds. Um, most of them. It's not all of them, but most of them. So, so that's, a, that, that, that's why it's good to have these um, precautionary measures like with your panniers and your, your gear and so on. Guys, I just want to let you guys um, also know, you know, um, this guys, um, another thing that people always get wrong is um, they think we just ride motorbike all day long, every day of the week, and we don't have anything else in our lives going for us. And it's actually uh, a misperception that at the end of the day, we've actually all got normal lives and we only ride maybe half of the week or two or three days or take a week trip or a or a whole weekend trip depending on on the weather and how the how work circumstances look like but um lots of times um i am gaming uh during the day to or in the evening i do a lot of gaming my, my favorite games as you can see i've got a large catalog of games on my pc i've got a water cooled pc Quite a strong PC, but I mean my eyes aren't what they used to be. But I like st uh, my favorite games are first-person shooters. So you'll see that Counter Strike. I've got a lot of hours in Counter Strike, maybe four and a half thousand. America's Army about four thousand. And um, then I do play um, other games like uh, No Man's Sky and The Witcher, Red Red Dead. I really like playing my games. So I spend a lot of my extra time playing my games and um, lately I'm playing uh, Valorant which is um, which is a game that's also a first person shooter but it's not on Steam and a lot of times when I'm on the game you have to have communication levels with the guys and the people are normally younger people playing and they always say yo but you sound like an old man or so on and they don't actually realize I'm am flipping old I'm, 58 years old my eyesight isn't what it used to be but I still enjoy my game so you're supposed to be lobbied in a group with people of the same skill level as you so but unfortunately South Africa is a small country and we don't actually um, we don't actually um, have that uh, luxury so um, so I just game a, a lot of times while well, the wife is doing admin work that's a that's an office on that side uh, and she's doing admin work and so on for the for the store that uh, my kids run for me. Um, well, it actually belongs to them, and uh, I'm just basically handing it over to them to take over. So me and Monica help out with those stuff, and then in the evening we'll bry and um, or barbecue. We barbecue 90% of our evenings. We've got three cats plus a stray cat, 
that um, belongs to the neighbors, like a red cat that comes to visit our cats, quite a vicious cat, but he seems to have a good relationship with our cats. Uh, so he hangs out here and we've got two dogs, um, Swiss Shepherds also, and so on. And with that, we keep ourselves busy. It's not just driving every day and uh, every day in and out. It's, it's basically um, living your life and uh, having your other passions that you have to look after. I just wish uh, we could ride till 65, 70, hopefully, uh, depending on how healthy we stay and so on. And um, yeah, and, and how safe we can ride because we're not mechanically inclined that I find always the biggest um, drawback, you know, and um, we've got to, we've got to see how long it lasts and, um, but, um, if you had to speak to my wife, Monica, she always tells me, you know, she just wishes she would she was driving 10 years earlier in her life, maybe even 20 years earlier in her life, because it's so, the feeling is so uh, liberating in that sense. And um, yeah, and uh, another thing that a lot of people don't take into consideration, especially older people, um, when you get to your 40s and 50s, um, you're looking for, you've had your kids, your kids are growing up, um, they're busy with their lives, you know, it, uh, they've got their things to do and so on, and um, you and your wife are looking for something extra to in your relationship to, you know, just to pass the time. I mean, some people read books, that's their thing. Me and Monica don't read books. Uh, other people watch series and watch TV. Me and Monica don't watch really TV and series. Um, either we, we we prefer we just prefer our um, like our hobbies her hobby is actually just on her phone googling her stuff shopping she's a shopaholic also on so you know what um, most women will really be able to relate to that in any case but she's got her hobbies and uh, things that she likes to do and I've got mine and um, yeah you're looking for that extra thing that you can do together as a couple and doesn't matter at all or how small you are because that's how the mis the mis uh, the misinterpretation a lot of women have they think they're too small to handle a big bike or too small to handle uh, any bike of that sort and yeah um try it out and you'll be very surprised i mean um i see a lot of people cycling i mean that's also not our thing but um like i said anything that you can actually get as a hobby that you can do together is very liberating and very enjoyable to do so guys um, get on a bike and ride you will never you'll be very surprised doesn't matter how old you are you can be young you can be like well I think you're allowed to drive from 16 in South Africa with a one to five engine capacity and an 18 you can drive any size and um, so on but it, it's not the size of the bike that counts it's the it's the confidence you can build and and where it can get you and what you can do to, with the bike so yeah that's it get on a bike now the the road that we just completed is a is a sand road between um between the road that goes to mossel bay in our area and the road that uh, attaches to Falmouth which is the back route which we took on this trip and as you guys can see it's a fantastic little gravel spot uh, it's good gravel yes there's a few wet spots on the road because of all the rain that we had and um, the journey we were doing was it's just a basically a 30 minute drive there and, a, and about a, a quick stop and so on but unfortunately um, what we could not show you guys is us arriving at eight bells which we'll do at another time because a matter of fact we did not arrive at eight bells we landed up stopping at a, a water a water um, fall area on the robertson's pass it was just uh, just about uh, i'd say about five k's in front of the uh, of the eight bells stop that we wanted to do and uh, when we stopped because uh, there was a motorbike on the side of the road so we thought maybe he needed help so we thought we'd stop there and see if he's fine and um, when we stopped and I noticed our back pannier on my bike zip it unzipped itself and um, the toolkit was wedged between the um, luckily for us between the pannier and the exhaust pipe 
but unfortunately the Lumio that I filled up the wheels earlier in the morning with and a few extra other things like our extra GoPro and um, Garmin uh, thing that we had it actually flew off the back pannier and must have fallen along the side of the road so we thought we'd actually um, we thought we'd actually go take a look and um, see if we could not find it and unfortunately we did not find it so that made the trip a bit uh, well it wasn't so bad because um, because at the end of the day we still enjoy the ride but uh, we did not complete the ride uh, hoping that we would find that um, that that bag that, that had fallen out which we presumed had happened on the gravel road so we had to do the gravel all the way back and so on which was nice but unfortunately we did not find um, that bag and I don't know if you guys noticed earlier in the video you'll see there's a white uh, little panel van that passed us while we were riding on the gravel road so I'm sure I'm almost sure that 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 panel van must have seen the bag or something along the road and picked it up so unfortunately we did not get the bag and um, yeah it's a pity but uh, it's one of those things that just happens but it just shows you um, the bag the bag it was basically when I say um, unzipped itself it's not really that it unzipped itself there was a most probably a little bit of a cavity and the wind must have blown it just more open because so I've got a uh, like I said a soft bag on top and unfortunately we lost that stuff we'll just have to make a plan of um, tying that down And that little insert that we at at the moment is our is the Robertson Pass. We've just hit the summit, and that's where we were uh, saw the bike on the side of the road and decided to stop and found out about all these things that happened. And guys, yes, um, this weekend we'll be fetching our grandkids, uh, the ones that are from Kimberley, to spend a week or two with uh, me and Monica. So our riding will be almost zero, most probably. Uh, maybe I'll get a ride in, but Monica will have to babysit most of the time and our campers back off the numerous uh, upgrades and repairs on a few things right and um, it is midwinter very chills dark in the morning cold most of the time and um, yeah we will most probably like I said uh, spend two weeks with the kids maybe release a video here and there of a few things like this um, trip that's uh, just a small one and then get back into the long journeys me and Monica are planning a good uh, week-long trip soon which is most probably heading to the west coast and doing a few long long miles on the on the bikes and um, yeah stay tuned and we will uh, keep putting these videos out there guys and thanks for the extra subscribers that I got especially that's why I added a lot of the gaming stuff now also onto this because a lot of the gamers ask me yeah uh, what do you do and how old you are and what games you play and um etc etc now you can actually look in the look on the seventh minute mark you can see those things there to see that we are just normal people also just living our lives and thanks for watching guys and stay safe and ride safe